I feel uh, both proud and very humbled uh, to be here today, and you know, I'm very excited to be in Edmonton for my first time. Uh, I think as well, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting every time you come to a new city. You know, it's new places, it's new things. Um, I guess you're uncertain about what's going to happen, but I find the more and more places I get to go, uh, the more excited I am to see the rest of the world, um, to know that there's so many great, positive people out there, and it's been a pleasure to meet a lot of you today. So I just wanted to say that. Um, today, though, I think we've seen that, uh, and we've heard, uh, that uncertainty, um, the unknown, the uncertain, uh, it can be really scary. And I think, and hopefully this doesn't bring back any too terrible memories, but high school. Um, high school is probably the realm of uncertainty. Um, the first realm, the one we all share in Canada and a lot of the developed countries in the world, around the world where we do have, and I will say, the opportunity to go to high school. Um, high school is the place where you're scared, um, you're still growing, things are changing in your body, your mind, your spirit, you're trying to figure out who you are, where you're going to go with your life, and what you want to do. Um, I know for me that high school was a crazy experience. Um, I found that you know, I, I didn't really know a lot about myself, um, about my parents, uh, my friends, uh, my relationships, and you know, things change. Um, and you think a lot about you know, who you want to be. Um, I think things often continue, you know, even as you get a little older, um, as you progress through your adolescence um, and other points of your life. Um, I found that I kind of got in a lot of bad habits um, because I was so scared. I was so scared and so uncertain about what was going to happen to me um, going forward. I think I got in a lot of bad habits like self-sabotage, um, like thinking very, uh, putting a lot of pressure on myself um, at different points to, to succeed or to make someone else proud. Um, and I know we've probably all shared maybe similar thoughts on that, or seen someone else go through those kind of problems. I think a lot of us in high school experience uncertainty. And it doesn't necessarily leave us. Um, uncertainty is a huge problem, and I think it is something that scares us um, over and over again. We want to know what's going to happen. We want to know. Um, we don't want to fail, and we want to be happy. We want to be happy. Um, for me, though, I think the last few years, you know, trying to get away from that uncertainty is, is not even trying to be less or more, or sorry, rather more certain about things, but just trying to not be scared about being uncertain. And I think a question worth asking is, why are we so scared? of uncertainty, of not knowing. Do we need to know everything? For me, I think what the main realization has been is that there are a few key strategies that I've been trying to use, um, new perspectives that I've been trying to adopt uh, to be okay with uncertainty. To view uncertainty, I think, as Suzanne said earlier today, is, is actually an opportunity, an opportunity for us to succeed. And there are actually gaps around this world that we can solve and do incredible things with, precisely because we are uncertain, because we have the opportunity as a human race um, as, as a country, as a city, um, as a province, as, 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 our, uh, as our human race um, to succeed. So I think that's pretty exciting. And I want to start talking about a few strategies and also even tying it to a couple global trends that I think are important. And again, hopefully this is both positive and practical for you. Um, something I did when I was about 15 is actually is, is I had the chance to, to cold call someone. Um, I was trying to find out, you know, what do I actually want to do? Um, and I cold called this guy, and he's in Toronto. Uh, he's probably one of the coolest uh, guys ever working in nonprofits that I've had a chance to meet. Um, his name was Dev, and I cold called this guy. Um, a kind of awkward, kind of skinny. I guess not much has changed in that department. But uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, this guy was, I was on the phone with this guy. I was probably talking way too fast, like I always do. But I basically said to him, you know, can I have the chance to work with you? You know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm smart, I've got some great ideas, um, you know, I'd love to start working with you. And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And I don't think he had any idea what was gonna happen either. But he gave me a trial run. He let me just start writing for him. Uh, he let me start sort of becoming a part of his business and the work that he was doing. Um, which I think for me was a great opportunity at the time. Um, but the job he actually gave me was the opportunity to post on his blog and his charities blog, opportunities for other young people. What I was amazed by was, was, for one, how many incredible opportunities there are, especially for young people, but so many free, um, incredible engagements and community opportunities um, that exist, I think, in this country and in the different provinces we have in our cities. And I was also amazed by how many of those opportunities go unfulfilled. It's crazy. There's so many offerings in, I think, all of these different places that we go to that we often don't take advantage of. Um, it really is crazy. And I think maybe it's because people are, for one, unaware. Um, that such opportunities exist, but perhaps they're also just uncertain um, of themselves and their capabilities. But I think the biggest thing that I was able to do, and, and just that one you know, crazy uh, flick of a moment thing that I did, was I reached out to someone. Um, I reached out to someone with more experience, someone who's willing to give me an opportunity, someone who's willing to point me in the right direction. I think it's key to being able to you know, still face an uncertain situation, but just be a little less scared, um, to approach it from a better direction, 
um, with someone guiding you along the way. I think on a larger level, um, an uncertain situation that I've witnessed recently is, is the one in none of it. Um, I had the, this is actually a, a picture of a Iqaluit, um, and it's a very remote place, as you can see. Uh, that's actually pretty much the whole scope of the town. Um, Iqaluit, of course, being the capital of Nunavut, um, one of our territories. I had the chance to go there um, with a number of other young Canadians from all the different provinces across Canada back in the fall. What really struck me about Nunavut, um, for one, is there's actually an incredible amount of you know, beautiful places, um, you know, in terms of the glaciers and other, and other zones around there, but it's actually the suicide rate. Um, up there, and I had no idea about this. And it's 11 times higher, 11 times higher than it is across the rest of Canada, um, a rate which I think is absolutely insane. Um, it's disgusting that we allow that to happen in, in our country, in Canada, where we pride ourselves on so many different things. Um, but to you know, have one province or, or one territory in different parts of our countries, especially, I think, across some of our Aboriginal reserves as well, um, this can be a common statistic. And it's a harrowing one, and I think it's one that we need to be really honest with ourselves about. Um, but the truth is, I think, you know, reaching out is also something that is proactive, not just for you as an individual, but in your community, in your city, in your country. It's how we really come together and, I think, become a nation, um, become a people, um, one that cares about each other and one that is constantly looking to face uncertainties together. That kind of direction, um, it's leadership that we need. It's focus that we need. And so I think reaching out um, is key to facing uncertainty individually and together. And again, I think we, we've seen more and more cases where uncertainty is present um, because people are not consulted upon decisions that are affecting their lives um, because things are happening without their consent. So I think that can be very troubling um, for these kind of decisions to be made. I want to offer a point of hope, though, and I, I think what's very interesting and very exciting is talking about reaching out is the connectedness of this world. Um, more and more, I think, you know, this world is becoming so borderless. Um, we have so many opportunities to connect with each other online and offline. And I think this is a bit of a contrasting picture, but you'll see tons of flags there. Um, this is actually a group of young people, about 1,300, from 186 countries around the world. Um, I had a chance to go to a conference called One Young World. And it truly is One Young World um, when you're there. And this was in South Africa. Um, and I think it was very inspiring for me to see that, you know, this was a group of young people who, who didn't know each other previously, who were able to come together and, and speak and talk about real issues in our communities um, around the world. And I think that kind of interconnectedness is a real, I mean, it's a real sign of, of progress, um, of excitement. And I think in a world right now where we are facing so many uncertain challenges, things like mass youth unemployment, which even in Canada is up to as high as 20%, even higher um, in some provinces, especially in the territories, um, it can be really insane. Um, to think about the fact, you know, how do we deal with these problems if we're not really talking to each other and looking for collaborative solutions? Climate change as well. It is a massive problem which could cause irreversible damage um, to our planet, to the environment around us, to our communities around us. And it's something that I think largely the next generation is going to have to deal with. But our connectedness, I believe, can help us face this uncertainty together and be less afraid of the challenges in front of us. This is another group that I work with called the Young Diplomats of Canada. I'm really excited about this project. I think it is the opportunity for Canada to showcase our place on the world stage. And I think it starts with our young people. It starts with our next generation showing off that, yes, Canada is a playmaker, and we are a leader. Um, we are a leader abroad, we are a leader at home, um, and we can do, I think, incredible things when we work together, we're connected across different provinces, and we're connected across the territories. I think very quickly, the last point that I want to leave you with is, is the true power of youth. Um, in the next number of years. Um, I think that youth are changing from perhaps being marginalized um, to actually under 35 being over 50% of the world's population. And I think in accordance with that is gonna be a huge shift in the way that we are seen by decision makers. And I think the empowerment of youth as a key stakeholder is incredibly exciting. Um, up here on the screen is Malala Yousafzai. Um, I'm sure and I hope that some of you in this room have heard her story. Um, she's a young girl from Pakistan who at one point of her life, had a gun to her head, and she was actually shot in the head. She was critically wounded. She was flown to the UK, all for standing up for girls' rights and girls' education. Um, not only was this act atrocious, but I think it sent shockwaves to the entire community there. Since then, though, I think what is possibly most exciting is that Malala has come back. Um, Malala has spoken, actually, in front of the United Nations, and I had a chance to see her on her 16th birthday deliver a monumental speech at the United Nations, um, shouldered by Ban Ki-moon and actually Gordon Brown, um, the former prime minister of the, um, of the UK. And I think that's quite exciting. 
um, to see that someone is so focused, um, not just on, you know, again, herself, um, but on the uncertainty faced by a whole generation of girls, um, of children in Pakistan and developing countries, um, even, again, in Canada, where some children do not have the opportunity to access equal amounts of education, um, an equal opportunity in education. She is standing for that. And I think she is focused on continuity. She is focused on us making sure that the generation after us can do just as well, if not better than we did. And I think that's a great way that we can face uncertainty together, is to make sure that people from generation to generation, children to children, teenagers to teenagers, all people don't have to reinvent the wheel, that we can continue, continue to build on one generation to the next. And so I think what we've heard a lot about today is uncertainty. How do we turn it from something that we're scared of into an opportunity? I think for me, I would just leave you with one message, which is don't be afraid of not knowing everything, of uncertainty. Be afraid of not doing something, not doing anything. Because you, you have the opportunity. You have the opportunity here in Edmonton, in Canada, and I believe the greatest country and the luckiest country in the world, the richest middle class, the most educated country in the world, you have the opportunity. So will you take it?